What's up YouTube, it's the Modfather66 and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here don't forget to hit that subscribe button for future content and today we're looking at all the most important bits of Bungie's latest Vidoc which revolved around the Shadowkeep expansion. All the things I'm looking forward to the most and some things that I think aren't so great and why I think so. And also why the Bungie Activision split is probably the best thing to happen to the game since, well, ever to be quite honest. So. With what is, in my opinion, Bungie's biggest and best update so far, let's get straight into it. First of all, straight out of the gate, cross saves, or in layman terms, a type of cross play. I'll get into that in a little bit. But being able to access your characters from one system and play them on another. Now for players like me, this is an amazing deal because as a Destiny player from day one, I've always played on Xbox. But lately I've bought a seriously badass gaming PC and naturally I wanted to jump back into Destiny 2. So I bought the game, started playing, and then I realised just how much of a grind I actually had to do to catch it up. And it just completely put me off, so I stopped playing, on PC that is. But now though, from September 17th, I'll just be able to grab my Xbox character on my PC and away I go. Or if I wanted to play with my friends on PlayStation, same applies. Just load up Destiny 2, grab my characters, and all my gear, equipment, weapons are already there. Now, it's not exactly cross-play. Because obviously I can't play with PlayStation players while I'm on my PC or Xbox. But this does open up a whole new realm of possibilities. Is it a step in the right direction towards crossplay? Of course it is. So this can only be a good thing. Second on the list, the complete revamping of the armor system. No longer will you just have randomly rolled perks and armor that drops, but instead you unlock perks that you can apply to gear. In the same way that you apply mods now, when you want to equip a mod, you just hover over the mod socket and select which one you want, but it'll be the same with the perks tool. Whether there'll be a perk vendor where you can buy perks to unlock to equip to gear, or if you have to dismantle a piece of gear with that mod that you want on it, so then you can equip it to the other piece, if that makes sense, that is yet to be seen. But the concept of it sounds amazing. Imagine having a full set of gear that you like the look of and having it perfectly rolled to how you play in certain modes. For example in PvP you could have all the perks that suited your playstyle like hand cannon targeting, shotgun reserves, the class item that makes you harder to kill when your super is active and you'd look awesome while doing it because it would be a full matching armour set instead of having those perks on random pieces of armour that made your guardian look like it had been thrown together by a two year old uh, builder bear. Thirdly, artifacts are coming to the game. An item which is only be described as an item where players get to fiddle with all these knobs and switches and just do all these things that they want to do. And, and when you unlock this last tier, all of these perks feel relatively close to what an exotic might feel like. So if you're new to the MMO style of game, which they are now describing Destiny 2 as an MMO for the first time in Destiny's history, which is amazing, but anyway, I'm going off track. An artifact is basically an item that you carry around with you that gives you extra perks on top of the ones that you already have active. When it's being talked about on the Vidoc, you can clearly see the Guardian that this artifact, Eye of the Gate Lord, is being tuned for a Titan. You can see perks for the Sunspot and the Throwing Hammers. How they'll upgrade it, we've yet to see. Just let me know in the comments what class you run and what perks and benefits you'd like to see from your exotic tier artifacts. Fourth on the list is the end of PlayStation exclusive content and weapons. Now I know this is going to touch a few nerves with the PlayStation loyal players from day one, but just hear me out, it is a good thing. As explained in the Vidoc, because cross play essentially, we'll call it cross saves because that's what it is, because cross play will be coming to Destiny 2, it would be impossible for Xbox players who have just transferred their character to PlayStation to play all of the content with their friends. Imagine you're a PlayStation player wanting to grind a Nightfall Strike for a strike specific weapon but you can't load into it because there's a player who you're friends with who has just ported from Xbox and the strike in question is a PlayStation exclusive. Well that isn't a worry anymore because all content will be available to all players and anyone who sees this as a negative thing, I'm afraid you're just wrong. This will undoubtedly expand the player base and that can only be a good thing for the game. Whether or not previous exclusive weapons 
and strikes will become available to the Xbox players and the PlayStation players that are jumping over, that is yet to be seen. Personally, I don't think it will. I think that will be left in the past. I think if that's been an exclusive in the past, then it probably will stay there. I hope it doesn't, because I want to I want to get them beast weapons that all you PlayStation players have been getting. But yeah, like I said, that is yet to be seen. Next up, I just want to quickly discuss what I think are not fundamentally bad ideas, but just not so great before finishing on why I think Bungie's split from Activision is by far the best thing that could have ever happened. Firstly, on the negative list, and it is a very short list as this is my only point, is the addition of a thing called New Light, where a brand new player can play the introduction to Destiny 2 and then instantly get brought up to a sort of end game level. Now admittedly yes, I can see why they're doing it. It's so that when you're trying to get a friend into Destiny, they don't have to play the first 40 hours or so on all the story and all the DLCs and they'll be on their own for the most part because let's be honest how many people would get a friend into Destiny and sit and play through all the story and the DLCs with them and these missions aren't matchmaking so they would be on their own for the most part they don't want them to lose the enthusiasm in the game and then just stop playing and go away but on the flip side if you're a player who uses the new light feature and you do the introduction to the game, decide to skip all the story, and just move straight onto the end game content. You won't have a clue what is happening. And you'll have the most basic of the basic gear, because let's be honest, they're not gonna just let you use this new light and just give you a, like, a few exotics and some beast legendary weapons. You're gonna have the most basic of the basic gear, so you're gonna feel majorly under-equipped. Imagine just installing the game, completing the introduction, finding a fire team and loading straight into the Leviathan raid, not knowing who the hell Kallus is or why we want to kill him, or loading straight into Gambit and not having any idea why Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat 11 wants to kill each other. I don't know, maybe it's just me, let me know in the comments what you all think. But finally, last but by no means least, the split that everybody thought was going to be Bungie's start to a long slippery slope to failure in regards to Destiny 2 but actually was the best thing that could have ever happened for them. In the Viaduct there were a few sly little digs at Activision, god I love bitchiness, and hints that it was actually Activision that was holding back all their progress, such as Luke Smith saying that they could try and concentrate on the next three to five years of Destiny now, and the fact that cross saves has been built and ready to be added to the game for some time, but has been held back by certain R things, but certain things had recently left them. And also now that Bungie can concentrate on the game for the actual players to enjoy, rather than just seeing it as a business model or a business structure. Obviously these things are expected to be said, it's not like they're just going to turn around and go, well, Activision's gone now. Looks like it's a downward spiral from here, Guardians, but please buy our content anyway. But honestly, I do believe what they were all saying, and I do believe that Destiny will only grow to be bigger and better Obviously, I'll leave the link to the Vidoc in the description box below. If there's anything that I've missed out that you wanted to talk about, please sound off in the comments and let me know and we'll have a discussion about it down there. Or just let me know what you're looking forward to most, either in the update from the Vidoc or the Season of Opulence, which we're obviously in now. So that just about does it for this video though, so if you've enjoyed this one, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, it does help me out tremendously and you will keep up to date on all my future content. As always, Guardians, I've been Mod 566 Have a great day, and I'll see you all on the next one.